Hey, what's up? I'm Cam. And I'm Alex. Uh, we're from the session team. We're going to discuss tech, messaging apps, digital rights, and everything in between. What's on the bulletin today, my man? So the biggest thing going on this week is there has been some civil unrest going on in Iran. Uh, and as a result, the government over there in Iran has been cracking down on various platforms, most notably Signal. Mm. Uh, so Iran has tried to block Signal before. So if you remember last year, like early last year, uh, WhatsApp made a big boo-boo <laughs> with the privacy policy. Right, yeah. This is yeah. one of the biggest ever boo-boos. I would say. I don't think they had no idea how much of a boo-boo it was. I don't think they, yeah, I don't think they saw it coming how big of a deal it was going to be. But it was Tuesday. like... January, yeah, it was just Tuesday. Uh, And uh, January last year, WhatsApp's like, oh, we're actually going to be like sharing data with Facebook. It's like, don't worry about it. And you just like have to accept this within a couple of months. And it should be fine. Let's do it. Uh, And so when that came out, you know, there were millions and millions of people who flocked away from WhatsApp. They were like, I don't want to be a part of this. This is exactly what I was worried about when Facebook initially bought WhatsApp. Yeah. I'm out of here. Well, because things sort of changed a lot over the... Like, that was, like, the breaking point after, like, a lot of, like, incremental changes towards that. Because when um, WhatsApp was acquired by Facebook, a lot of people were like, I don't like it. Chrissy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wake up. I don't yeah, like yeah, it. yeah. And they were like, it's fine. It's totally fine. It's all going to be fine. And then that was the point that everyone was like... It's not fine. Like, yeah, it's not Yeah, this okay. is like the, f- it was the straw yeah. that broke the camel's yeah. back for a lot of people. Not for everybody. Obviously, WhatsApp's still super popular, but yeah. like As a lot a of people, people. <laughs> just a little bit, uh, a lot of people were out of there. Uh, and Signal was one of the biggest uh, benefactors. Yeah. Benefactors? Benef- yeah. Yeah, uh, they benefited. Uh, they benefited. It was a yeah. factor of benefit. It was a factor. It where was they like benefited. like yeah. the like a doubling of the user base basically yeah. overnight, right? Yeah, it was huge. In fact, so many people went to Signal. I'm pretty sure they actually had some issues with their servers because it, the amount of new people that joined was just unprecedented, mm. and they couldn't scale quickly enough to handle the amount of growth they were having, which is an awesome problem to have yeah. if you're a tech product. Um, but around the same time, Aram was like, "Oh, okay, so everyone's using this Signal app now." We should do something about that. So it got taken down from Cafe Bazaar, which for those of you who don't know, are kind of like the App Store or the Google Play Store in Iran. Um, sounds way cooler. Sounds like way chiller. Yeah, than yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It sounds like a nice place to hang out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Signal was taken down from there forcibly by the government. Uh, and eventually when they realized that people were still you know, getting the APKs, they were like, oh, we're just going to start dropping Signal traffic completely. And then people weren't able to access Signal. Now, the way that Signal got around this was using proxies. So basically, you could set up a little server, uh, like the community could set up a server, um, and they would be able to access that. Presumably, it wouldn't be blocked, and then that would bridge them to the It's a bit of a cat and mouse game, right? Like, they basically, like, people set them up, they shut them down, another person sets one up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that worked um, for a good amount of time, but then we got all the way to last week, uh, and things ramped up hugely again with all this unrest and protests. Um, the government was like, okay, we need to get really serious about this again. And Signal's, um, signal service was basically taken offline. Yeah, well, they also, like, interesting that we sort of were talking about WhatsApp in the context of this before because they, they wanted people, they wanted to spy on people's communications so much that they even shut down WhatsApp, which is not great for privacy generally, but is end to end encrypted. So Instagram, I believe, and mm-hmm. WhatsApp, and um, like shutting down access to mobile internet completely, more or less, for like pretty significant periods of time. It was sort of a curfew style enforcement, yeah. is what I saw. That basically, like at the times when the civil unrest was peaking and the protests were really gaining momentum, um, that is when they would shut it down. Yeah, and it's kind of crazy to imagine being in a situation like that where something like a private communications app or a social media platform like Instagram is so crucial to something so important and it just being taken away. It's kind of a trip when you think about how much we take it for granted and the trivial ways that we use it. Yeah, absolutely. Something like Instagram. And how fragile it really kind of is. Yeah. Like we think about the internet as being this really sturdy and like solid thing and like any time your um, connection to the internet is interrupted or even just slow. Yeah, like yeah. if I'm working in the office and I'm like, oh, my 20 gigabyte file is downloading kind of slow today. Yeah. It sucks. It's an issue. Um, it's like, I feel... But actually, upset. it's really fragile, especially yeah. when the infrastructure, you know, is 
owned by the government or the government has the ability to tamper with it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so, yeah, you know, the internet can be shut down and in Iran it has been before, multiple times, there have been multiple internet shutdowns there. There was like a whole week apparently. Yeah, like yeah. 2019, I think, around the protests that were related to fuel prices, I think. Right. They just basically shut the whole thing down for basically everyone for like a week, which is crazy. Which is crazy. And I was I was reading people like, oh, that's fine. It's not shut. Just get on the ham radio. Yeah. And just get and send you. And like, it's for, for us, it's kind of like... Ham I'm, radio. Not, I'm not anti ham radio, <laughs> but it's like everyone's just going out the back. I don't yeah, think so. Yeah. Um, but there are like uh, tech tools as well that can help with this, right? So one of our um, favorite messaging apps yeah. uh, that we like to spruik is Briar. Yeah. yeah. So Briar, if you don't know Briar, operates in a bit of a different way. So you don't actually need internet access to be able to send messages. It's fully peer to peer which is really cool. So the way that it will propagate messages is just by sending them to nearby devices. It's on Bluetooth basically, right? Yeah, and yeah, more or less. A, what they call a mesh network through Bluetooth connections. Yeah, which is really cool. And especially when you're in a situation like Iran where a lot of people need this style of communication because things like the internet are unreliable, mm. then the mesh network gets stronger, right? Like the more people that are using it, the more reliable message delivery is going to be. Um, because you do need like... It's not luck because it's statistics, but like you need to walk past someone that you can propagate the message to, right? Yeah. For sure. uh, and so if just like no one is open to doing this, then it's not going to really work. Yeah. Um, and we kind of saw this um, back in the day when they, because they wanted to do a similar thing with um, like COVID uh, case tracking, right? They wanted yeah. to have it like everyone had this app in their pocket yeah, and then they would, past, it would like send the token to like the people around you and then if you were positive, it would like alert them. Yeah. Um, so it's sort of a similar concept, but this time actually privacy preserving unlike yeah. a lot of the <laughs> COVID tracker apps that yeah. ended up being a bit of a it's nightmare. A can of worms. Yeah, but with Briar, you know, the messages are encrypted yeah. and everything's really upfront. Yeah, a done, very well-respected messaging app with a great use case for offline yeah. messaging. Yeah, yeah. Um, and another one I think that is, you know, this really highlights the importance of services like Tor, right? Mm. Um, so when you see things are being blocked or censored, this is where Tor comes in. You know, you can access it through Tor instead. Signal's kind of tr doing a, not the same thing in, in, really at all, but like in principle with the proxies, right? Yeah. Similar thing. Um, and I think what it really brings you back to, sort of with Briar as well, right? is the way to gain more censorship resistance. In the end, it comes back to like your first principles, your infrastructure, how yeah. it's set up. And the answer is it needs to be decentralized, right? Yeah, for sure. It's too easy, you know, um, like you were saying with this cat and mouse game, if there's just like one target that you can just hone in on or focus in on, it's pretty trivial for someone as powerful as a state actor. Yeah. Uh, to pretty much just whack the mallet. Especially a state actor with like a history of doing it right. It's mm. like they're, you're, they're in the speed dial basically. The people yeah, yeah, you yeah. need to contact to the get button. this to happen. It just it's boom. like it's one person, it's one company or yeah. like a handful and like you, you've you done it all before. You know what I yeah. mean? So. Yeah, so you know, um, we're seeing this with Signal, right? Like when Signal went down, uh, Meredith Whitaker, the CEO, the chair of I the Signal so. Foundation. I think she was a board member who became CEO recently. Right, right, right. Um, put this message out saying, hey, everybody, you know, we asked you to do this before, back in 2021. Initially, mm. you know, to set up these proxies, we're asking you to do, do it again. And by reaching out to the community, what you're really doing, you know, you're going for this decentralized resistance, right? Yeah. You're trying, yeah. you're saying, hey, the only way around this is like a community approach, a decentralized approach. That way, you know, we can pop up a new proxy quickly enough that isn't blocked and people can get out to signal from Iran. Yeah. Um, or whatever service it may be, similar sort of concept with Tor, right? Um, and there's like levels of, of Tor being blocked as well, but it's more dynamic and able to adapt to this kind of like whack-a-mole censorship yeah, when sure. it is decentralized and community operated and people from all over the place can kind of like do their part and chip in. And there is a messaging app where this ethos, this style of decentralization is actually built into the DNA of the infrastructure. Itself. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned it. So obviously it's Session. It's Session. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's session. It has <laughs> <laughs> that decentralized backend, right? Yeah. Um, and that's kind of the whole point, right? It's like um, these sorts of 
situations. Obviously, if the internet is cut off, there's not a lot you can do in that situation. But in terms well, of... Well, Briar comes in. Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, but in terms of censorship resistance through decentralized infrastructure that allows access to the service in ways that can be hard for large actors like a state um, mm. to repress and to shut down, these are some of the most important use cases for private messaging. And these are situations where being able to communicate and not being spied on, the implications are massive. The implications Life can, yeah, for individuals and for whole social movements, which yeah. have the capacity to bring about massive positive change for entire countries, even like you know, groups of countries. Like we saw what happened yeah. in the Arab Spring, where it was like a domino effect, mm. somewhat facilitated by social media and the ability to communicate online. Yeah, um, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Sorry, I was just telling Cam. I'm going to firstly he's apologize. A, he's a table I, I like to tap the table. I'm a, I'm a table tapper. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I apologize to the audience. We promise we'll get a shock mount for future episodes. Uh, but no, the point that you're making is absolutely correct. Like this stuff is really essential and increasingly in the world that we live in now, right? Like if you can't communicate digitally, people have trouble communicating at all. Like yeah, it's such exactly. an important pillar of yeah. how people organize, how they affect change. Yeah. Um, and we've seen this play out multiple times, like you said, uh, over the course of the last decade at least, but mm. realistically probably longer, this has been really important. And um, I think having that, the thing, like you need to have that decentralized approach from the beginning because yeah, it's really sure. hard to like smack a Band-Aid on it um, and hope that that's going to be good enough. Yeah, it needs to be fundamental to the thinking behind the way that the technology is designed from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um and, you know, we're seeing it play out in Iran. We've seen it play out in other parts of the world over the last few years. Uh, it is really important. And I think uh, governments are going to become more aggressive with trying to censor platforms that they see as, you know, enabling, yeah. uh, you know, activity against their interests. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so and we have to like be really a, aware of that. We need to prepare like for it before... It gets yeah no totally. Yeah. You want to be proactive. You don't yeah. want to be trying to like slap a band down on it afterwards. You don't want to be reactive. You want to have already got the solutions ready to go for when you need them. Yeah. And there's like this sort of like we're not gonna be going back to a time when digital communication is less um, widespread and ubiquitous. You know, it's like there's a there's a direction that things are moving in. Yeah. And we need to be ready as it progresses. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, you know, I mean, that's the situation in Iran. It's still very much unfolding yeah. um, and likely to unfold over a fairly large period of time. Um, but that's, you know, how things are going there at the moment. At home, there's been some other stuff going on, hasn't there, Alex? Unfortunately. And unfortunately, this is a story which is very p close to me personally yeah. uh, because I was affected. Yeah, very, <laughs> by, very, very personally, your personal information, in fact, yes, um, was affected. So I think safe to say the biggest data breach in the history of Australia. Yeah, well, it's kind of like funny when they're, well, it's not funny, but it's interesting <laughs> when they're talking about the amount of people that are affected and you think about that in the context of the population of a country like Australia, which is only something uh, like 28, 30, million. 28, 30 million yeah. people, and they're like, 10 million people <laughs> were affected. It's like literally like one in three. Yeah, you know. one in three people. Yeah. So for a bit of context here, uh, Optus, the second largest telecommunications company <clears throat> in Australia, was uh, had a huge data breach. Basically what happened was some... Some person at Optus, we don't, very I don't think a very unfortunate individual, <laughs> uh, left an API endpoint uh, just like open to the public. Uh, and you could access it without authentication, which basically means that literally anybody could go and uh, scrape data from this API. And someone did. Someone thought, you know what? That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. someone did. And as it would turn out, the data that they were able to scrape was more or less all of it. All the data. So yeah. uh, in Australia, you know, we have, uh, you know, regulations around telecommunications and things like this. And so the kind of data that is ex exposed here, things like passports, mm. addresses, emails, uh, driver's license. Basically everything that you would need for 100 points of ID for opening <laughs> all sorts of accounts yeah. and taking loans out. And so like I initially got the email from, uh, from Optus, I thought, like, 
last week, I think, now. Yeah. Well, so you're one of the early ones. I was one of the first like, people. Like, yeah. They were like the first person we need to talk yeah. to, Alex Linton. <laughs> like, this email guy, right now. This guy is a high-value target. Yeah. So, they, yeah, they sent me an email, and they were like, hey, so um, just by the way, yeah. just keep an eye out. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Did they tell you whether or not your like driver's license or passport number were leaked? Because apparently that's only about 2.8 or so million people actually had that, which is still a lot. But, like... It's uh, people are now kind of finding yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. So they got my drivers, but oh, um, true. Yeah, no, but no um, I think uh, the thing that's been really interesting since then, mm. because obviously this has been really widely covered in the news here in Oz. Um, but the thing that's been interesting is like every single like thing, like every exchange that I'm signed up to, yeah. or like any random like website. Um, that knows that I'm in Australia has emailed me being like, hey, uh, just be careful. And like like my bank got in touch with me as well, being like, oh, just just be on the lookout, you know, and so we'll be on the lookout and you be on the lookout and like yeah. hopefully nothing bad happens. Yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> but yeah. it's been you a know. pretty shocking yeah. um, experience. A lot of people are going to be completely, there's a bad thing going to happen to well, so this, the, another part of the story that I think is really interesting is the hacker. Yeah. Um, so the <laughs> Optus... It could have been fortune. Could, <laughs> currently He's still unknown. still out there. Currently <laughs> unknown, the hacker, but yeah. it could have been because yeah. fortune is on the loose. Um, but uh, the hacker... So the hacker was posting on a forum. I'm not really sure what forum this was, being like, oh, yeah, so I've hacked, hacked Optus. I've got all this information... Um, and they they said, oh yeah, I'm I'm gonna release like ten thousand people's information every day mm. until you give me a million US it's dollars. So, like, it's so like it's like very, very dramatic. It's very like theatrical. <laughs> it was very theatrical. It was like it was out of like a Hollywood film. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, when I first saw this, I was kind of like, oh, a million dollars, kind of a drop in the bucket. You yeah. know, for no, a telco that that's worth like I was like, like no, you're worth. Dollars. No, you're worth. Yeah, you're yeah. Queen, like. <laughs> like, this data is worth a lot more than that. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting because um, the hacker posted this and then said, oh, I'm releasing the first batch today. And then the next day was, or like a few hours later even, which like, and we'll pop the post up, was just like, actually, sorry, everybody. Um, I didn't realize that this was going to be like, so harmful to everybody. I'm really sorry, Optus. I'm really sorry to all the people. I've deleted the data. I'm gone. Disappeared. Huge prank. Uh, so Such <laughs> pretty, um, pretty bizarre one. Uh, I yeah, would say. pretty weird. Pretty weird. Like, is that like where we're up to in this in this evolving story? Yeah. Is well, that... as far as um, as far as I know, that's kind of like crazy. Right now. I would have taken the million bucks, Eddie. You know? Well, so I saw <laughs> no, some. Not really. It'd be very irresponsible for someone to do that. I saw some speculation. Um, so, like, the journalist who was reporting on the forum posts yeah. was basically just, like, taking the posts and putting them on Twitter for, mm. like, people to read. Uh, and then the, in the replies, there was another journalist going, like, oh, this is really strange and this kind of behavior is really typical if the ransom is paid, but there's, like, an NDA saying you wow. can't tell anyone yeah. that we paid Which this ransom. Which makes total sense, right? Because if I'm, like, if I'm, like... Uh, I was going to say John Optus, but it's actually the, the head of the company is a woman. If I was Jane Optus, <laughs> that's just, if I was John Optus, wait. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nice. No, if I was Jane Optus, I would probably, um, absolutely pay the money. Why would you not? pay the money it would mm. be a very obvious choice to pay the money so um yeah i guess not a lot of people are super aware of what is likely to play out in the situation like this other journalist was but like when it's laid out like that it seems kind of seems right. possible right i don't know if we're gonna get in trouble for even speculating on this <laughs> but um <clears throat> like it definitely seems like that if i yeah like you said i would i would take the deal yeah it's a great deal yeah. you know like i would be probably, like i would be like hoping i'd be like oh. 1.1 1. 1, like you know, there was like take it take it there was, and then there still is but yeah. like talk of class action lawsuits yeah, sure. and like hundreds of millions of yeah. dollars of damages yeah um and just the damage to optus's reputation like probably their entire customer base i know i was immediately like planning my exit i yeah, was like okay sure. i gotta get all my ducks in a row because the thing is right immediately um and we kind of spoke about this last time with the twilio hack mm. uh immediately my first thought was oh man like 
everything that I've, I've used my phone number for 2FA because like there's a lot of platforms where you don't have an option. Yeah. They're like, you need to have 2FA and it has to be your phone number. Mm. Uh, like my bank is one example of that. And I was like, oh, um, this kind of sucks. Uh, how am I going to get around this? I need to like ch- change all the things that have 2FA, but I don't have like a registry possible, really, of all the know. services I need to change. Yeah. And I was like, it's a logistical nightmare. Yeah. Um, and it kind of makes the point again about phone numbers and like how they really are just like, yeah. a, you know, a, a ball and chain around yeah. our ankles. I think that um, one way that it's been put in the past um, is it's basically a, a sort of social security number, an unofficial social security mm. number, basically, that's used to identify you and is linked to all of these different things, which yeah. is not like, like the person that invented the phone number probably... <laughs> they were just like, I want to send a message to Jim. It's, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Probably had yeah. no idea how badly things were going to snowball into the situation that we're presently no. in. No. But speaking of snow, uh, <laughs> good old, our old friend, right. Ed Snowden. Yeah, yeah, Big Ed. Big Ed is his name around the office. Big Ed, as we call him, our close and personal friend, yeah. uh, has some good news for some really good news. themselves, yeah. which is uh, that Ed has been granted Russian citizenship. So huge. Um, I know that he has, a, he has a young family now, so I'm sure that this is like a huge load of his mind. Um, yeah. It's a bit more stability for his family. <clears throat> it's great. Yeah, well, I mean, like, it's, it's really interesting because my first reaction was, oh, man, like, that's great news for him, but it sucks it sucks at the same time. They're like, because he, I, I saw that he'd applied for asylum in 27 different countries before he went to Russia. Wouldn't necessarily have been the top of his list. Yeah, and he's been like a pretty vocal, um, like, uh, critic of Putin and the Russian yeah, government and sure. oligarchy, etc. And so it seems it's, like a bit of a tenuous <laughs> it's a, uh, it's situation. It's a crazy, for like him. the enemy of my enemy is my friend situation. <laughs> well, I think it literally is. <laughs> yeah. That is the situation. Because Ryan. it's like, obviously, um, in uh, Russia, there is a lot of censorship and surveillance. Uh, yes. Massive issue, some yeah. would say. Yeah. Um, don't put a hit out on me, please, Vladimir, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you take what you can get when you're in a yeah. situation. Yeah. But yeah. Good for him. Good yeah. for him. Yeah, oh, no, I'm really happy. I'm really happy for him. You know, I think um, he's been fighting the good fight for a long time now. And, yeah, you know, it's sure. clear that a lot it's of the issues... down eventually. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's, like, like, done. He's yeah, done. I yeah, would he be. just wants to, like... He gets, like, a farm somewhere, like, a nice veggie patch. Oh, that'd like be great. Chilling. Pretty cold over there. Can you farm in Russia? I think, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big place. It is. Rather large <laughs> yeah, area. Sure. Probably farms, Yeah, I would I'd say. I hope so. Uh, cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, thanks for joining us for episode two, guys. Um, yeah, I guess we'll wrap it up here. Yeah. Uh, it's been a good one. There's a lot going on in the world at the moment. Uh, there's always much more to cover than we can get through for in sure. 20 or 30 minutes. But if there is something that is very near and dear to you that you would like to hear us talk about, let us know. Uh, yeah, let us know. And we will you know, hop on and do some research. And get up to speed, and yeah. then potentially chat about it. We'll in have a yarn. Three. We'll, we'll get to, down the nitty gritty. It's really what we're doing here. Which yeah, is exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, cool. we'll see you next time, everybody. Thanks, guys.